welcome back to my channel uh, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel so that uh, whenever we post anything uh, you can benefit from it for some time now we've been looking at the physics practical the wire physics practical that is coming up later this month on the 24th and we'll be looking at the various uh, ways the questions can come and how it can be tackled. I had initially, uh, I did the video initially on the mechanics, but I found out that what I posted was not complete. So I want you to just take your time and look at this video again, but do not forget to subscribe. Now, we are talking about the oscillations that this particular experiment has to do with uh, moment of inertia. It's an oscillation that involves uh, a metal root suspended by two vertical and parallel thread and you also have two sets of masses 80 grams each uh, placed at uh, the two sides of the meter now there are two possibilities to this experiment this is the setup diagram for the experiment in this setup diagram, this is the meter root, and it is suspended by two threads, two parallel threads of equal length. Right? And the distance between the thread is labeled D, while the length of the thread is L. Now the two masses are placed, one is placed here and the other one is placed here. The point or the place where the masses will be placed will be you know, given in the question. But for this experiment, I've decided to place it at the 15 centimeter mark and 85 centimeter mark respectively. Why the tracks are placed at 10 centimeters and 90 centimeter mark respectively. Now, what are the two possibilities or even three possibilities? The first one is to have the masses placed at this point and then the distance between the masses B is kept constant, the distance between the threads D is kept constant and then you, have, you vary the length of the thread. That is the first possibility. Okay, so you will now be having a situation where C squared will be plotted against L. Okay? So the distance B between the, the masses will be, kept, will be kept constant, and the distance D between the thread will also be kept constant. Now, if you plot the graph of T squared on the vertical axis against L on the horizontal axis, what will you be aiming at? Now, take a look at the background theory or equation that will give rise to this particular graph or this experiment. The period of oscillation for a loaded by failure suspension like this, T is given as 2 pi root 4L B squared over G D squared. Okay? Now, if you square both sides, you have T squared equals to 16 pi squared L B squared over G D squared. Now, if D is constant and B is constant, D is the distance between the thread. If it's kept constant, B is the distance between the masses. If it's kept constant, then the only variable here is L. So I can rewrite this equation as 
t squared equals to 16 pi squared b squared over g d squared f. So the graph of t squared will be plotted against L, and then you have a straight line graph, no intercept. And the slope s of the graph will give us 16 pi squared b squared over g d squared. Alright? And from the slope, anything can be evaluated. You can evaluate b squared, sorry, b, which is the distance between the masses, alright? So, you can be given a situation where you'll be asked to evaluate uh, maybe Q equals to 16 pi squared over GD squared. Alright? And then you'll be asked maybe to evaluate K, where K is S over Q. Okay? You know, if Q is equal to this, if you bring it back to this equation, it means that S will be equal to Q B squared. Alright? S will be equal to Q B squared. Now, S over Q will be equal to B squared, and B will be the square root of S over Q. So you can be asked to evaluate maybe k, where k is equal to the square root of s over q, and q is equal to this, alright? So this is one possibility, okay? Where b, the distance between the masses, is kept constant, d, the distance between the track, is kept constant, and then you vary the length of the thread. And then you take the time for 20 oscillations each time you vary the length of the thread. That is the first possibility. Okay. Now let's look at the second possibility. The second possibility is having the masses exactly at the point where you have the thread. Okay. So meaning that the second possibility is if the masses are also placed here. The same point where you have the thread. Maybe you use the thread to hold the masses. So, if that is the case, it means that the distance B between the masses is the same as the distance D between the threads, okay? And as a result, okay? As a result, our formula will change. C squared, don't forget, is equal to 16 pi square L B squared over G D squared. And now B is equal to D. Therefore, this will cancel out. And then you are left with T squared equals to 16 pi square L over G. Are you following? Okay, and so you can be asked to plot the graph of T squared on the vertical axis against L on the horizontal axis. And then you have a straight line graph, no intercept. So the slope of the graph will give you 16 pi squared over g. So you can be asked to evaluate k, where k is equal to 16 pi squared over the slope. And if you are asked to do that, that k is definitely the acceleration due to gravity. So, you can do it like this. That is the second possibility. Okay? So, you have the masses placed at the exact point where you have the thread, and then you vary the length of the, of the thread. Then you take the time for 20 oscillation. Okay? As you can see, the period of oscillation is directly proportional to the length. So, if you reduce the length of the thread, the time of oscillation will reduce. If you increase the length of the thread, the time of oscillation 
will increase. So, because of this uh, relationship. Okay? So, this is the second possibility. And then the third possibility, which is the uh, table of observation that I have on the board, is having the uh, masses at a point different from where you have the thread, just like we had before. Okay? And then you have the distance between a distance B between the masses. Okay? Alright. And then in this setup, you have the distance between the thread kept constant. You have the length of the thread kept constant. And then you are varying the distance between the masses. That is the third possibility. Alright? So, the, 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 in this case, still going by this equation, this time around, L is constant. D squared is constant. So, plotting the graph of T squared on the vertical axis against uh, B squared on the horizontal axis, you still have the straight line graph. And then the slope of this graph will give you 16 pi squared L over D D squared. Again, here, you can evaluate anything, something similar to uh, what we did in the first possibility, the first case, okay? Where you can ask, you can be told that let Q be equal to 16 pi square uh, over D square, over G D square, rather, right? okay? And then you, your slope becomes Q L, and then your L will be uh, S, over P. Okay? So this is the third possibility. So, but regardless of which one, which will be spelled out in the question, this, you perform the oscillation the same way. And why do you perform the oscillation? After you have suspended the thread, you make sure that the distance between the thread are equal. That is very important. The oscillation is not side to side like this. No, it does not go from one side to the other like this. Rather, the oscillation is vertical about the center of gravity of the metal rod. Okay? It goes like this. Right? So that is very important to know that the oscillation is not side to side. Okay? It's not side to side, but a vertical.